Most RV holding tank gauges suck. Use this inexpensive water flow meter so you can stop guessing and really know when your gray tank is getting full and when it's time to empty it. We spend most of our time camping at state parks that do not have sewer connection. Once in a while, we stay at a thousand trails campground like this one here in Maine for two weeks to save money and have the luxury of a sewer connection so we can enjoy long showers. We were originally assigned this site with a sewer connection, but it was small and had no privacy. I had the opportunity to walk the park before we registered and saw this site right here along with several others adjacent to it that weren't being used. I asked if we could switch to one of these sites and they said those sites don't have a sewer connection, which is why they weren't being used. They were surprised that we would want one of these sites considering we are staying for two weeks. We told them we preferred the privacy and space and would just use our sewer tote. The main problem with using a sewer tote is filling it without overfilling it. If I overfill it, I can't disconnect the hose without spilling nasty gray water all over the place. I want to use the maximum capacity but still have room to empty the hose so I can disconnect it without spilling. I'm going to show how I use this water meter which makes using the sewer tote much easier and reduces the risk of making an overflow mess. You cannot rely on the gauges installed by the RV manufacturer. They are notoriously inaccurate or just don't work at all. We only use our sewer tote for our 50 gallon gray water tank. Our black tank is 50 gallons. It lasts us up to two to three weeks before it needs emptying. We made it last over three weeks last summer while mooch docking at a friend's house in Ontario, Canada, but eventually had a honey wagon come pump out the black tank. This is the rain point water meter uh, that we use right now. It's also sold under the brand name Restmo on Amazon. Now I'm going to demonstrate how we use the water point water measuring device, how we connect it to the RV, and how we use it in conjunction with our sewer tote so that when we empty the sewer tote, we don't make a big mess. Now this is our rain point water metering device, and this is how it comes from Amazon. There's another brand out there called Resmo, which is very similar. Now the big difference between this and the Resmo is that this one, for whatever reason, only comes with one quick connect on one side. Um, you'd actually actually have to connect a hose over here and to be able to connect the other side. So the uh, Resmo version comes with two quick connects. I had to go to uh, Home Depot and buy another quick connect. So now I have a second quick connect for the bottom. So now I have my male connection over here and my female connection over here to put it in line between my water inlet and the RV uh, input. So the device itself, it has this yellow button in the middle and it has a couple of different modes here. So right now we're on auto mode, which that basically tells you the flow. So if you had water going through this, it would tell you how many gallons per minute are flowing through the line. Hit the button again and it tells you the average number of gallons per day. It'll actually tell you, um, you know, if you don't reset it over several days, it'll tell you your average water use per day, which actually can be pretty handy. You go back here and you get to the total screen. This is the total number of gallons that we have used since the last time we reset it. To reset any one of the screens, you just push and hold for three seconds on that screen and it resets it. So we'll go back to the total screen here. So it's a really easy to use device. The way it comes together it has these two little flanges on the side. You just pinch these right here and it pops this out. To change the battery, you just put the battery right in there. It's a CR2032 battery. Now it works on a device that's in here. It has a little impeller in here with magnets on it and the magnets activate in the computer in here and that's what um, tells the computer how much water is going through it. It's actually uh, really good. There's no chance for it to leak because it's done through magnet. The problem with the Rainwave one is that it doesn't work like that. The impeller is built right into the unit and it doesn't have magnets and I think that that's why these ones leak and break really easily. So that's the whole device right there. It's actually really simple. So uh, let's go ahead and connect it up to the RV. Basically the easiest thing to do is to take off my quick connects and I'm going to put the one quick connect, the female quick connect on my hose that connects to the a hose that's going to go to the city water connection and then my male quick connect is going to connect right up here to my hose that goes into my city water connection inlet for the RV 
Now the problem with this thing is that to actually insert it with the flow in the right direction, because if you read the flow, the flow goes this direction, has to go this direction, it actually goes in upside down. So you always have to read it upside down, which is kind of a pain, but it's really easy to connect. You just take this connection, snap it in there like that. Take my connection from my city water connection, snap it in there like that. And then we're ready to use the device and use the water. When you're ready to break down, it's really easy to just disconnect and just pop this disconnect, pop this disconnect and put it away for when you're traveling. Now that we have it hooked up to the RV, we get to our site, I make sure I hit the reset button, the gray tank is empty at this point, and we use our water like we normally would. I check the meter here periodically, and when it gets close to about 26 gallons, our sewer tote is a 28 gallon sewer tote, I wanna make sure I don't overfill it, so we usually don't go over 26 gallons. Right now we're at 25.5 gallons, so I know that if I empty, my entire gray tank right now, it's not gonna overfill. So now I'll go come in and I'll do my gray tank dump. So all I gotta do is come over here to our gray tank. I'll make sure that I pull up my valve here that goes to the gray tank and make sure that this is all connected ahead of time. And I am going to pull my gray tank right now. I pull my gray tank. Now you can see right now that the water is coming from my gray tank and into the RV. I have to release my, my air vent to let the water continue to go in. So this is where it's really helpful to use this um, method because I don't really have to watch the water going into the tank. Overfilling is where it makes a mess. Okay, I'm gonna let that last little bit of water get back into the tube here. Just about dead right there. Just about empty here. I'm gonna let that last little bit get in there. I'm gonna shut off my gray tank. I'm gonna shut off this valve right here. But the problem is right now we got, we got liquid in here. So we gotta get this liquid into the tank. The problem is, is if we overfill the tank, we're not gonna be able to have room to put this liquid into the tank, which is why it's really important not to overfill. So all I do at this point is I just lift the hose right here, just a little bit at a time, and it will pour that water into, into the tank. And I'll just do it again. Just keep lifting up. Let that water sink down to the bottom. Lift up again. This way we don't make any mess. Okay, so bring that down to the bottom. So now there might be a little bit of water down here, but we're gonna disconnect here. Now we don't have any dripping right here, which is great. We hold this up. We let that completely drip, drain into the tank right there. I'm gonna switch this around here like this and kind of working under my slide here. Oops. Now I come over to the sewer connection on the tank itself. And I just connect that on there like that. And I'm ready to head off to the sewer. Uh, I'm ready to head off to the dump station. Now I have my elbow on here. I have attached to the top of the sewer tote so it's nice and easy to use. We're almost filled to the top. This won't drag or anything like that. So we're ready to go. Make sure that my valve on top here is nice and tight. And now we're ready to go and dump the sewer, sewer station. I just pulled the sewer tote over to the truck, hook it up to the ball hitch, attach my securing strap and take it off to the dump station. Just take off my foreign one from the top of the sewer tote, disconnect the hose, attach it to the foreign one, put the foreign one into the sewer inlet and pull the gate valve. I reposition the sewer tote back at the RV, reconnect the hose so that I'm all connected and ready to go the next time I hit that 26 gallon mark. Even if we take regular showers without conserving water, we only need to do this every three or four days. Another great thing about using a water meter is you can see how much water you're using for a shower, washing dishes, using a washing machine or a dishwasher. Just read the meter before and after and subtract. It is surprisingly accurate. We tested the unit for several months while at campgrounds with a sewer connection. We kept our gray tank valve closed 
and let the gray tank fill until it backed up into the shower or the sink and then read the meter. By doing this many times, we realized that the water would back up at around 55 gallons on average. We have a 50 gallon gray tank, some of the water was going into the black tank, and some of the water was staying in the drainage pipes. Doing this exercise really helped us understand how much water we were using for certain activities. If we are staying for a campground for a shorter stay, like four or five days, and do not want to have to use the sewer tote, the meter lets us know we are getting close to being full and whether or not we need to conserve water as we get close to the end of our stay. When we are dry camping or boondocking, we have a lot more information about our water consumption, helping us conserve water better. Over the last year, we've been using the RainWave device, which does a similar job, but the RainWave breaks easily and leaks, and I don't think it's as accurate as the RainPoint device. We've actually gone through two or three of these before I looked at this one and find this one, and so far, it's very accurate, and I haven't broken or leaked it, so we're gonna stick with uh, the RainPoint. Now, I will leave Amazon links in the description for both, but I do definitely recommend the RainPoint device, but it's also sold under the Restmo brand. Many RVers resist using a sewer tote. They can be messy if you use them wrong and are hard to store, but can really help open up more camping options like here at 1000 Trails Park or at our favorite place to camp, state parks, which usually do not have any sewer connection sites. Using this simple and inexpensive water measuring device makes using a sewer tote easier and less messy. That tank gauges that came with our RV were inaccurate when they did work, which is only for the first couple of months that we had our RV. They only have three lights, which really does not help at all. Would you give up a sewer connection site to have a better campsite without a sewer connection? Do you use a sewer tote or a water measuring device like this one? Please share your experience in the comments. You can also share your comments on our Instagram and Facebook pages. If you like this kind of content, we do lots of RV how-to videos like this, RV DIY projects, campground tours, and full-time RV travel experiences. If you like that kind of stuff, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking this link below. I will also leave a link to our other sewer tote videos over here. And remember, downsizing does make sense.